Someone from each group, one, one or two people from each group would come up. We're going to go ahead and have you share. James, if you want to go ahead and start getting prepared, we'll let, we'll let the folks um, share their findings, and then we'll go into our final presentation of the day. We'll try to get everybody out of here in time to beat most of the traffic, hopefully. We try to be cognizant of such things where we can. Can I get number two on, please? Thank you. All right. And if you'll just tell us who you are and what your question and topic was and the takeaways that you got. Um, hello. I'm Gary Bergeron. Uh, we are on the DevOps side. Uh, first question, any lessons learned or advice on upskilling system admins? Uh, takeaways, uh, do Jenkins scripts uh, because they are easier or they are closer to their knowledge, to system admins knowledge. Uh, number two, get assigned bug fixes or refactoring. Uh, number three, test, script, test scripting. Uh, and number four was code documentation. Uh, question number two was how do we know if DevOps model is working better than Dev plus operations? Uh, Takeaway number one, our do I generate this? Are you producing fixes faster? customer satisfaction. Uh, number two, employee attrition rate. Uh, number three, MPS. Number four, DORA reports. And uh, number five takeaway is measure the, measure the things you want to make better. Awesome, thank you very much. Yep. I think um, I wanted to make one comment. Yep, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Give a round of applause for that team. I wanted to make one comment. I, I wasn't in this group, but one comment that I think is important. I love that they mentioned NPS. And there's a reason for that specifically. It's like when organizations are working to adopt DevOps, they usually have more of a product and customer centric view. And NPS becomes much more important. When we're siloed IT organizations, we tend to focus on our silo and just how happy we are with what we're doing and everybody else can bugger off. So I think an NPS score is fantastic. I think that uh, was a great addition. All right, uh, let's see, we had career development. Someone from the career, career development group wanna come up and just share a couple of things that were uh, outcomes for your group? All right, we had three questions in career development, and we kind of had like a little symposium with the group, uh, our group ourselves, and we talked about how we interface uh, on our own teams and how we kind of like suggested things for our peers. Uh, so how can I make my work or my team's work visible and valued by leadership? I think the big thing that we pointed out there is uh, constructing guilds within your organizations that allows everybody from like uh, your engineer all the way up to your senior leadership to have input in what the technology stack might look like for the future of your organization. That allows everybody to participate. That also allows um, your work that you may be interested or intimate or most intimate about be visible. So it's not about talking about the future, but it's also saying, hey, I use this tool. Can we develop it a little bit more? Or I need other people, are there other people in the organization using this tool? Let's come together and make it like more viable platform for us in our organization. Um, where are the best resources for how to use Splunk? Use cases, forms, et cetera. Uh, Splunk has like loads of documentation like any product that you might find off the shelf. Um, there's also like a lot of other Splunk people around that have used Splunk pretty intimately, um, and we kind of like know the ins and outs of that type of stuff, so we're out there. Um, but the other one that came up is like, find out what fits your needs, figure out what the gaps are, work with 
that type of information and then put Splunk into kind of like this mode. Uh, I found a problem, I know how to fix the problem, and now I'm just gonna tell Splunk how to do it. So how you get that all together with Splunk kind of gives you kind of like a good resources within your own organization on how like how to utilize that. So it's not always on Splunk, it's also on you to kind of build the knowledge around that too so that your install is relative to your business, not to the examples that were on their website. Um, will cloud providers, AWS, need ops folks? So how do we, uh, or do, so how do we keep, yeah, there's some, there's some words in there in like English, <laughs> so, uh, but basically like, if we're talking about ops going away, but what about the stuff that like AWS uses? And I think one of the points that was brought up in an earlier slide was about the T and you know where you have like master of multiple domains, but a specialist in one. And I think that's really important. And I kind of share that with a lot of the young engineers on our team is, is that it's great if you know like what neighborhood you live in. It's great that you know the governor of your state. And it's also great that you know the president but do you know what countries border France? And you don't necessarily need to be French to understand that. You just wanna know that's what's going on in the rest of the world. And you wanna take that advice with your technology too. You may be in a specific area and you know the intimate parts of that technology, <coughs> but places like cloud, they're gonna need folks that are specialists that are DBAs, but it's really nice for you to know what the difference is between SQL and NoSQL is and how that relates to your services that are being provided if you work for one of those providers like DynamoDB um, or any of the or any other technical stacks like how your containerization stack works or, or like your compute stack works. So I think that was kind of, yeah, that's it. Excellent, round of applause. Thank you. I'll take that. Thank you for holding I'll take that. Too. Mike, Christopher, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Uh, we had cloud operations. There was a topic there. Do we have some folks talking about that? It's your choice whether you bring the paper up or not. We can't read it from here. <laughs> yep. I cheat. I take photographs of all of it, and then I'll use it. Um, uh, this is a good point to point out that we do have a Slack team specifically for a Slack workspace for new ops and new ops days. Um, You'll get that in the email in the next day or two, our follow-up, thanking you for coming. I um, highly encourage you to join. I will be feeding a lot of these questions into that so the broader community can share in your questions and answers. And I meticulously collect everyone's answers and we'll be posting them on the website soon. So, sorry, just a transition on that. Thank you. A uh, question we had was, what does cloud ops entail and how is it different from traditional IT operations? Um, I must sadly admit I pontificated far too long. Uh, the somebody else's answer, not mine, uh, architecture and center of excellence, uh, understand the uh, process, understand one-to-one -one what was on-prem and what is now in the cloud. Um, but I will take the opportunity to pontificate yet again, sorry. Uh, and basically, uh, it, it's the focal point of trying to, uh, what's all integrated into the cloud, what's operationally working in the cloud, where, where are your queues, where are your data stores, where's your, your service endpoints, if you're doing service architecture or containerization, where those are living, if you're doing Kubernetes in production, which I know none of us are. Oh wait, there was one hand somewhere. Anywhere, he's gone. Kubernetes in production. Uh, if you're doing Docker or things like that. So really cloud operations is, is at least from my vantage point, uh, coming under the guise of automating, cookie cuttering, and making sure everything's stitched together, so. Excellent, thank you very much. And I believe there was a question on the containers board. Did anybody discuss that or was it left orphaned? <laughs> Stay, we will post that in Slack so we can, uh, we can get some answers. Um, and we, we've had containers and security and other stuff and all. I've been collecting these, so they haven't been posted yet. Um, you know, this, the forum idea is fairly new. We've only done, this is the third time we've done it. And now I have enough content that we're, we're going to make that available on the site pretty soon, probably sometime over the summer. Okay?